Uh, so hi there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Template Master podcast. And we started having guests in our podcast. It's super exciting. And please welcome Anne. She's an illustrator and a really great illustrator. And you will see her works too a little bit later uh, down the road. But Anne, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a couple of words about what you do and what we'll be talking about today, basically? Uh, hi, I'm Annie Cole. Uh, you also can call me Anne, whatever. Uh, and I'm an illustrator. Uh, I've not always been an illustrator. I've been shifting between design and illustration for, I don't know, maybe like 12 years or so. Uh, but maybe a couple of years ago, I decided to pursue my true passion, illustration. And so now I dedicate my free time to being an illustrator. So now we are going to talk about uh, the Instagram and growing your account as an artist, an illustrator, a designer, whatever. I think that the trends are the same for all of us. Yeah, I do believe that. Um We've actually discussed it right before we started recording the podcast that uh, the journey for you, if you even if you are an illustrator, either an illustrator or a designer, web designer, or graphic designer, it will be pretty. All of these journeys will be pretty similar, and we'll learn a little later why. And um, we'll actually be discussing the strategies how you could grow your. Um, profile on Instagram, your account as a creative and grow your audience and what benefits it might bring to you as a creative professional. Right, Irene, because you haven't said a word really. Um, yeah, hey there. I'm just listening to you guys talking and enjoying the conversation, but um, uh, I'm so excited to have you on our show because uh, like Anne and I are friends for some time, like have been friends for some time. And so um, I'm really interested and excited uh, about how long have you actually been a designer and an illustrator? How long have you been switching? And uh, just could you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh. During the last, as I said, uh, 12 years, I had a nice opportunity to work in different design related fields. Like, I've worked for web design, for game industry, and so on, but I've always had a strong focus in research. Uh, so, um, maybe the last three or two years, um, uh, when I most focused my efforts um, to be in research and those growth. I actually saw uh, like today on Instagram that uh, you've launched uh, like some special offer for uh, your subscribers. Uh, can you tell like a few words about that as well? Like prints? Uh, yeah. uh, I'm uh, selling some merch and uh, some prints of mine on different platforms and it was the launch of in-print uh, platform in the ma magazine. Uh, so there are still, uh, you can buy some prints with uh, discount. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's so cool. By the way, if you guys want to follow Anne on Instagram or any other platform, she also has a website, her personal website, where you can see her work and she also posts some tutorials. So if you're an aspiring illustrator or you just have some interest in illustration, you might want to check those out. And we'll link to those, um, well, in the description. We'll leave the links so you can access them and you can also uh, get those um, merch with prints at a discount as we just discussed. So um, a little later, we'll talk about what other benefits uh, you can gain as a creative by having an audience online, either on Instagram or in some other platforms. And uh, first of all, probably the first question that I'm personally interested in, uh, well, as someone who might want to start uh, an Instagram account, like the, not the personal account, but the account like a sort of a portfolio you know, the portfolio thing where you can put, um, um, you can upload your work and just show show off your work. Uh, as a beginner, as somebody who's just starting out their account on Instagram, what tips would you give to such a person? If they're a uh, web designer or a graphic designer or an illustrator, what your tips would be? Uh, so I've got, I've got some tips for you guys. Uh, first would be like, uh, invite your friends and family. Uh, it really makes sample uh, sounds like simple and obvious, but um, your potential visitors will see that you don't have like, like your followers, but like sounds like, 30, 14, whatever, and they will more likely to follow you. Uh, the next tip uh, would be maybe uh, try to post every day. Absolutely a good habit. Uh, so you 
like uh, educate yourself to uh, do it, uh, the routine. Uh, but uh, also in some, you know, a couple of weeks, you'll have an attractive page to the content and so new visitors will be like to them as well. Um, also, maybe it's a separate topic for the interview about hashtag, but it's a really great uh, stuff and you um, may do some research if you want to uh, gain some followers. Uh, but uh, it's a really broad topic, I would advise you to dig into it. Uh, so my next tip uh, would to join some challenges. Uh, it's really helpful when you are trying trying to grow your audience. Because uh, uh, not only you meet the new people and um, uh, somehow interact in our community, but you also grow your engagement. So all other people uh, who join the hashtag can leave a comment and say something nice to you and you can call them back. And so it's all the it's a big part of being an artist in that on Instagram. <laughs> Um, so uh, my next tip would be um, don't don't really don't post the uh, personal stuff if you want to keep it really professional. You can post some stories with your family, with your dishes, with your dog or something, but don't put it on your Instagram post. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Uh, the next would be maybe uh, collaboration with uh, people who have a bigger audience than you. It's not just asking for some favors or something like follow me and I follow you, please repost me on the story. Uh, but something that will bring value both to you and to Google first. For example, if you're a motion designer, you can uh, reach out to an illustrator and uh, offer him to make a motion picture from the illustration. It's more likely that uh, he will like your work and repost it with all his credits and uh, some of his audience will be engaged with you. So, it's very beneficial for both of you. So, uh, if you happen to have a big audience on another platform, like maybe Dribble, uh, you can try to redirect your followers from there to Instagram. Like, um, you can put the link in your profile, uh, or if it's Behance, you can end up every your every thread of yours with this link to the Instagram account. Um, so, you can somehow interchange audiences. Uh, also, post your know, stories daily. Uh, they say that uh, Instagram favors this engagement and so, and uh, besides, your face will be always um, in front of your audience in this uh, upper bar of your Instagram. Um, for artists, uh, I know uh, that uh, some people put uh, a lot of hours of work in their creations. So maybe some work would take like 10 hours and so, uh, but uh, posting one picture a week isn't very good. So we can um, somehow cheat the algorithm and put some work in progress, sneak peeks or some, uh, so that people know that you're alive, the run knows you're creating new content, and that somehow uh, get your engagement. Uh, maybe my uh, last tip would be just be sweet, engage with people, answer their, their comments, write nice comments uh, in, in their feed. Uh, so that you can um, visit about this community and uh, who knows where good karma tell you <laughs> could take him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, thank you. Those were very valuable tips because I uh, myself as a marketer, I've been listening to all of these and I've been thinking to myself that these are really working tips. Uh, but I also just have a, like a little remark about that, that actually an, an illustrator or a creative who decided to start their way on conquering Instagram, they also need to be like a little bit of everything, you know, like a little bit of SMM and a little bit of marketer. And they really need to develop this kind of marketing vision uh, to, you know, promote themselves on Instagram and to promote their uh, personal brand. So what was it difficult for you to like learn about these marketing things or did it just happen naturally while you were, you know, developing your profile? Uh, well, I think that my uh, full-time job helped me greatly with this because I am working in an agency. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. <laughs> That's beneficial, of course. That's an asset. Yeah. Alexandra, what do you think about this? Well, I I am listening. As I, it's been a lot of very helpful tips, especially for a beginner and who hasn't had a lot of experience with platforms like Instagram and stuff like that. 
uh, because it seems to be like really a lot of work if you want to get something out of it. Uh, different people, when they start their Instagram accounts, they have different goals. Maybe someone just wants uh, to have well, someone just wants to have a lot of likes, probably, uh, and just wants to share their work and engage with the community, just have a lot of friends among other creative professionals, right, just to, to be a part of the community right. and just chat to people, get feedback on their work, that kind of thing. And there's another category of people who are really looking into um, getting pr new projects, getting new clients out of this um, uh, Instagram activity, right? So I would just split... Uh, the people, the creative people on Instagram and these two very rough categories, like very roughly. Um, so, and what do you think uh, for someone who's looking to gain more projects and new clients using Instagram, is the approach to this uh, type of goal has to, does it have to be different from um, the goal where you just want to engage with the community? Do you have to post a, some different a type of content or maybe you have to, I don't know, adjust your bio in some way? Like what, what your tips would be for someone who just wants to run Instagram as a way to gain more clients, more projects and more income? Let's just put it that way. Uh, so the most, tip, uh, the most simplest tip would be like write in your bio that you want to get commissions. You'd say commissions are open. <laughs> Um, so, uh, what's more, uh, if you are looking for some particular commissions, um, think about putting uh, your work like in series and mock up so that your potential client will see it, how it's presented. So, if he is into book covers, you put your illustration in the cover. And so, uh, it may sound very obvious and very simple, but sometimes people don't get it that the illustration could be applied this way. So, if you are really looking to be in a book designer makes this more ups with books. <laughs> it's really helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that makes a lot of sense actually. This might be like common sense and you can get it yourself, but it's it's not that obvious once you once you you know start applying these tips to your own work. This is very helpful actually. Yeah, um, like was uh, uh, actually I just okay. <laughs> I'm just loving it, just loving it about online conversations when you just start talking at the same time, like all of you. <laughs> this is this yeah. is really fun. <laughs> but I just had like a quick, a little quick remark about Anne's Instagram profile, which I dig very much, and uh, she has like uh, these eternal stories here, there, and so she actually put like different pieces of her work into eternal stories, and this is some sort of her portfolio, so you can actually just go and see what she does and get an understanding about this, like, instantly. And this, I guess, is always helpful uh, to someone who's looking for an illustrator for their project, and maybe this can help attract customers like, like this. Oh, probably, um, but... Uh... <laughs> No, I mean, I'm no expert, so I'm just saying. Uh, another question I had, uh, like how, mm -hmm, how do tutorials help you grow your audience and who your audience will be eventually if you, if you post tutorials? Like uh, the people who are looking for tutorials on illustration or let's say in graphic design or in some specific tools like Adobe Illustrator or Figma or whatever, they are just designers or illustrators just just like you are. So the tutorials will probably not attract new clients or am I mistaken? Like how can actually tutorials help you grow your audience and what benefits you can gain out of it in the end? Uh, so I'm not actually posting much of tutorial. I've got maybe a couple and they lead to my blog, it's full, full article, mm -hmm. uh, which can tell people. Uh, well, about the, uh, Expand it a bit. Uh, so, uh, so for me, the goal of putting it is to um, drive the traffic to my blog, I think. Um, so my blog, uh, I try to put there the answers to common uh, questions I receive from my followers. Uh, like people always like to know um, how to enhance their craft, uh, how to use some particular programs, what are the benefits of them. So I try to answer the questions. Um, uh, I'm not sure that Instagram is that much tutorial oriented uh, platform. It's, um, I guess YouTube is more suitable for this. 
Uh, but some carousals uh, with helpful tips have been um, you know, very helpful for maybe a year or so, and a lot of designers have uh, applied them and then, you know, instead of trying to go. Mm -hmm. So you can try it <laughs> if you want to. Actually, uh, this is a cool idea because your comment section from like under your posts on Instagram is actually a source uh, for your content ideas. And uh, you can really like put these questions and integrate them into your content plan, right? And so you always have some fresh ideas to write about uh, like on your blog. We actually do this too on our YouTube channel and we read the comments and uh, a lot of times we really cater to what people are asking from us, like to make a, well, Alexandra does most of this, of course, like mm -hmm. tutorials, elementary tutorials, and uh, she's very good at that. So uh, this is actually a fu fun and cool way to, you know, like uh, make your content strategy a little bit more versatile. So thanks for sharing this. This is also very helpful, I believe. What do you think, Alexandra? Oh, yeah, I am here. <laughs> no, I just I was just scanning through questions and um, thinking that how I could actually phrase that question because uh, something that I've been thinking for quite a while. Um, okay. Uh, it is, there is no way to not put a lot of time and effort into an Instagram account if you really want to get something out of it, right? Could you kind of share with our audience how much time, let's say per day, if you post daily, how much time would it take you uh, to create a post specifically for Instagram if you like a, like a personal project, not for a client because you, you cannot always share client work on platforms like Behance Instagram and your website sometimes, you know, NDAs and that kind of thing. Um, how much time does it take you to post daily on Instagram? Um, well, I don't post there daily because <laughs> I'm busy with my full-time job, with my salad house, not my personal project. Uh, but um, some outcome of this too uh, could be posted there. And uh, if it's personal, it really depends. If it's my personal project, I can dedicate from a couple of thing, evenings to maybe a week to do it. Uh, but as I said before, it's useful to post uh, some sneak peeks, something just to um, to remind people about yourself and to get them uh, wait for your next illustration. Uh, so uh, now it's a uh, posting process uh, itself. It's took maybe it takes maybe like twenty minutes, but then you have to uh, dedicate like an hour to answer to guys who uh, write in comments. So it's uh, really nice. Mm. So you can be engaging and really nice to those who to take time to um, comment you. Okay, so this is like uh, roughly like maybe an hour and a half or something like that. So whenever you post, yeah, yeah you just. Uh huh. I understand. Yeah, that's that's like very cool because I think that it really takes a lot of time to engage with your audience and to answer all of these comments to make sure that like people are not left feeling left out and that you really paid attention to everyone, and that's that's kind of cool. But that takes time, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, and this this kind of helps you build the um, sort of a connection with your community, with the people who are actually following you, because they nobody wants to follow some soulless robot or something. They they looking to engage with people. They're looking for feedback, for communication, for some helpful tips. Because you know, as a, of course, they will be looking up to you as someone who is more experienced, who can do better work than them. This is why they will be following you if they're um, like creators as uh, you are. So definitely, yeah, engaging uh, with people in the comments, this is, this is probably crucial if you want to build the solid following on any social platform, basically, mm -hmm. whether it is Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. If you're not replying to comments, like, who are you making this content for? If there are people are sharing their opinions on the piece of content that you have posted, this is important that you kind of react to this in some way. So yeah, definitely. Uh, another question I've had, uh, you know, as someone, let's imagine that someone who wants to, like, go, like, go for it fully, and they want to create an Instagram account, they want to create a Dribbble account, a Behance account, a website, um, is it even a good idea to try and uh, post 
your work regularly on all of the platforms? Is it, okay, let's phrase it in a better way. Is it necessary for a creator to have accounts on all the platforms? Uh, or is it better to stick to one platform, but make it um, look very, very good and really dedicate all of your effort towards one single platform? What do you think? Um, so, uh, you know, in ideal world, where we don't live it, uh, we have plenty of time, uh, we have operating uh, on all the platforms, Instagram is nice, Google is shining, we post a couple of tweets every day and so, uh, but in reality, uh, unfortunately, we will always have some job to do, we have some side hustle, we are trying to live a social life, and so we don't have time for all this. Uh, so my advice would be to focus on uh, one, two, maximum three platforms you can yeah, afford to uh, keep on track and to keep updated regularly and to stick to it because uh, it's uh, a bit easy way to burn out and to build some creative block if you try to be everywhere and you end out like <laughs> nowhere. Um, you uh, can make, uh, you can create your accounts uh, wherever you like, but um, just uh, leave there a, a link to your main platform. So uh, if you could keep it in brand, you could have the same avatar and so the same email, uh, you can just uh, leave your followers wherever you want to from this platform. Maybe it would be nice. Yeah, but keeping three platforms, like, this is still a lot, I believe, especially if you live, like, in a big city and you have all of these things apart from your job and side hustles and everything like that. So, yeah, this this takes a lot of time and dedication for sure. I personally try to invest in my Instagram and my blog and everything all. Yeah, but how, how long actually did it take you to get, like, 20,000 uh, following. I know that you've grown your blog organically and uh, uh, the audience is genuine there. So, like, I wonder how, how much time did it take for you to grow? Uh, well, it's a simple question. <laughs> um, um, you can always check my first post on Instagram. Yeah, and it dates back to August uh, 2019. Uh, but the growth wasn't always linear, linear you know. Uh, um, yeah, no, and it's, it's like yeah. like this. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Uh, it, it's this. At the beginning, I didn't take it serious. I didn't know if I want to invest my time there. So, uh, but then in 2018, maybe I tried to. to I really put my effort in it. it. Took my time. I researched some hashtag strategy and something. Uh, and uh, at the end of the year, it was like okay. Um, okay. So and now it's. Something about 21k growing. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry for being mistaken. I just like last time I checked, it was like 20 something. So, <laughs> yeah, but that's that's cool. Congratulations. That's that's very ad admirable. And yeah, good luck to you with growing your blog and you know like reaching uh, bigger and higher and better aims uh, in your creativity. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, but th yeah, th that was just like a, a marketing uh, side of things because, you know, I'm always interested in how people are doing things like that. But yeah, let's get back to the illustration. Sorry, <laughs> I'm like straying <laughs> away from the main topic. <laughs> Alexander is going to kill me for sure. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's actually uh, very helpful because uh, the people who do creative work, such as illustration, design, animation, that kind of thing, they are very good at what they're doing normally, but uh, for them it is a very uh, difficult topic and very scary topic to tap into the marketing side of things because nobody likes it. Nobody likes selling their uh, services, even though this is how you got to earn money, right? Nobody likes this process. Well, some people do, but not, not many of them. Um, I guess that it's like they're more uh, are feeling uncomfortable doing yeah, this, yeah. like offering something like blatant promotion and like into the face promotion. But on the other uh, hand, like this is necessary, just like you said. Well, yes. And uh, talking about promotion and selling and actually putting your work and uh, the word about yourself out there. Is it really necessary nowadays to have a website dedicated to well, to, to showing off your work. 
like a portfolio website or a website where clients can land on and uh, see like how they can get in touch with you because now with these platforms like instagram dribble they they can, you can put your email address there you can like put all of the means people people can contact you through so is it very necessary or is it mainly like a means of um kind of painting the picture that you are hmm that people can take you more seriously if you have a website or is it or does it really make any difference uh well in my experience a content that you definitely look more professional because you own it so it's like your own space that you can design the way you like. There would be your all your necessary uh, links, uh, all your necessary projects, and so on. And what's more, your potential client won't be distracted by any. So when you're on some other platform, you can start researching he or she. <laughs> can start researching for them other artists, can be yeah. discouraged by the amount of likes and comments you get on your picture, like on Reading. So it's, um, uh, it's very cool when you have your own website. Um, yeah, but also I've seen that your website is uh, has kind of a module for a, like an online store, so you can actually plug it in like some extra functionality and you know like use it to promote your work, your artwork, and maybe like just sell some merchandise like you're doing. So it's also a nice way to do that, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it has a lot of benefits having a website has a lot of benefits and nowadays uh creating a website is pretty easy and you guys know this if you follow this channel so if you just happen to need a portfolio website just a second of shameless self-promotion guys just <laughs> quickly go to the description if you want to check out some portfolio wordpress website themes whatever Let's keep going. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, and could you please mention a couple of uh, brands or maybe some projects that you're very, very proud of uh, that you've had recently in your career? Um, I'm really trying myself in editorial illustration now. And uh, one of the projects I really enjoyed was the um, illustration for the Medium article. Medium is a uh, big digital platform with uh, some current news. And so we made this project for uh, for an article uh, which uh, featured them um, very political issues about uh, Yemen and the war there. Uh, so um, the illustration was it's some kind of a cover with a big <laughs> article. So great. Um, on the side note, I'm really enjoying uh, creating the covers for podcasts and the YouTube channel. You know, uh, and um, so some recent um, works of mine include um, uh, covers for um, music band, and uh, oh. they are uh, slightly animated because I'm now uh, into animation. Where, um, that's I hope cool. it would grow bigger, yeah, and uh, maybe that's my focus in the future. <laughs> okay. That's awesome, really. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, I don't know if it's like uh, if it's possible to talk about it a little. But I know that like uh, a long time ago, you mentioned to me that you did a project for Esquire, uh, like online magazine or their website. So like projects like this are on your portfolio as well, right? Uh, as far as Esquire, I wrote there as a designer <laughs> for like a year oh, cool. or something. Yeah, and it was uh, in a web designer role. Yeah, so it's not uh, connected to illustration, but it was also a cool experience for me. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. Really, you have a such a cool background, and you can share like lots of these gems with the, our audience. So we're so grateful that you're doing this. So cool, um, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Do do we have uh, anything else to ask? Like yeah. maybe some I think pressing. The, burning questions uh well i have a, all i always have a ton of questions and ton of things i can ask about but uh for now just to keep it very short so people can actually finish watching <laughs> 
because normally we tend to make our podcast like 40 to 50 minutes long and this is very exhausting for us and for the viewers alike so we, we recently have been trying to keep it as short as possible and it wasn't always successful it was rather unsuccessful uh, <laughs> but um, what I've been thinking is that the last question uh, to actually make people who are still in doubt or maybe they're hesitating to start their own uh, Instagram account, what uh, benefits, what are the biggest benefits that you can uh, that you can describe and you can point out to, you know, to help people make their minds and to help people actually uh, put together enough courage and finally start this Instagram journey? What are the biggest benefits if you have an Instagram account as a creative professional? Uh, well, uh, you know that uh, maybe everyone knows that Instagram uh, wasn't that uh, wasn't considered an, an, um, a professional platform for designers for many years. It was more an entertainment. Uh, but uh, I've seen a shift uh, in the perception of this uh, platform in the last two months, maybe two three years. Something. Uh, so uh, more and more designers are uh, starting to keep it really professional and uh, their audience is uh, professional. And so uh, I think it's really cool to have a portfolio there because uh, 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 on, on one hand it m makes you more approachable by your potential because you have uh, an opportunity to write a message to your fellow creator, to write him an email or to uh, contact him any way he chooses there. Different ways to, uh, and um, secondly, uh, yeah, not all of your potential clients. If you think about it, have uh, an account uh, on Dribble or Behance, uh, but they uh, pretty all of them nowadays have Instagram, so they can call contact you directly. Uh, no obstacles, nothing. So, uh, it's a really cool way to um, maybe to get some side projects done and to meet some really good people for collaboration. So I really advise to make your Instagram as a your professional page. Yeah, that's that's actually a very sound point because Instagram uh, now has like a billion following or several several billion following as far as I'm not like mistaken, and uh, that's very cool of you that you you mentioned this difference between uh, Instagram and other platforms. I'm sorry, you just wanted to say something, Alexandra, and I just like squeezed in. <laughs> No, <laughs> I I just uh, I just wanted to say that uh, definitely this is a very as you've said this is a very sound point that uh, not all of the people who might be who might potentially become your clients uh, they will have an Instagram oh sorry a Dribble account or a Behance account and they will not uh, hang out there on these platforms. Some people don't even know these platforms exist because they were originally there were for creatives to share their work with the community. Uh, and later they became like sort of a, um, a source of new projects and new clients for some designers. But not all clients, not all your potential clients might know uh, about these platforms and how to find you on these platforms. But Instagram, everyone is on Instagram, just everyone everybody uh, all kinds of people and all kinds of opportunities can be waiting for you in there so it is definitely an investment of time and effort into some of the great opportunities in the future yeah yeah absolutely okay should we be rounding this thing up and uh, i guess that we had a very nice conversation like full of tips full of uh, priceless gems that people can actually use just uh, after watching this podcast, they will go and start like working on their Instagram profiles. And thank you, Anne, so much for joining us. Uh, this has been a huge pleasure for us. Uh, and uh, I know that Alexandra was also very excited to to be meeting you uh, in person. So thank you so much for for being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much for this encouraging conversation for a lot of super helpful tips and we really hope to see you on our podcast sometime in the future. Maybe we'll talk about some tips for uh, designers and illustrators who want to, I don't know, do whatever. I'm pretty sure we, we have a lot of uh, things to discuss with such an experienced person like yourself. This is why uh, if you have some time in the future, I'm pretty sure your audience will be as excited as we are to see you in our podcast in the nearest future. Thank you. Sure, thank you. <laughs>
So thank you so much and thank you guys for watching. And uh, well, if you have any questions, uh, you just shout out in the comments and let us know if you like this episode and if you want to see more of uh, Aniko and if you want to see uh, more of similar content on our channel. Do you, have, do you guys have a couple words to say lastly before we wrap up? Um, and it's up to you, please. <laughs> Um, it was a, a pleasure to have this interview. Um, this is my first interview, yeah, so sorry for my nervous. <laughs> no, it's okay, it was perfect. <laughs> and for my accent, uh, I really hope to make some more interviews in the future because uh, it's really relaxing and it's very friendly. Okay, really enjoy the company, so thank you. Thanks so much. We'll be excited to have you again on our show or maybe like to collaborate on some other projects. You know, we have lots of ideas. So if you're open, we're always welcome to to make you part of them. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Uh, it has been the... Well, we pretty much reached the end of this interview and we've discussed pretty much everything that we wanted and we'll be wrapping this up. Thank you so much, guys, for everyone who participated in the interview and to everyone who watched the interview till the end. And we'll see you the next time, everyone. Bye. Yeah, bye.